Hey folks, thank you so much for tuning in to our third Hangout with Chad. Today we'll be talking about how great music and great beer go hand in hand. My name is Laura and I'm the Communications Director here at Noda Brewing Company. Before Chad gets started with today's topic, I'd like to introduce our two guests. Our first guest is Terrence Richard, the lead singer of the Junior Astronomers. The Junior Astronomers is a local indie, post-punk, and rock band that formed in 2008. They have been performing in the greater Charlotte area for the past seven years and have been a huge influence on the local music scene. We're also joined by Chris Osment from the Fillmore in Charlotte. The Fillmore is one of the largest music venues in the city, and Chris handles marketing for the company. We couldn't ask for two better guests to explore what great music and great beer have in common. Finally, we're happy to introduce our favorite marketing consulting company. The Savage Way is run by the dynamic duo Tori and Paula. These ladies will be monitoring Google Plus and social media to find your questions and comments throughout the Hangout. While Tori describes how to use the question and answer app, go ahead and follow them at The Savage Way and make sure that you're following us at Nota Brewing. Over to you, Tori. Okay, hello, and thank you for having us back again. All right, so today to engage with us on social media, there's two different ways to do it. The first way is through Google+. If you are on Google+, and watching the Hangout, in the top right-hand corner, there's a little grid. If you hover over the grid, it will let you enable the questions app that will pop up on the right-hand side of your screen, and from there, you can submit your questions. The other way to do so is through Twitter. So, of course, you Noda Hangout. Okay, that way we can track everybody, and just in case you forget to copy someone, we're all using this hashtag. Make it trend. Okay, that is it, and tweet us any questions if you have, but if not, just enjoy the show. Awesome. Well, thank you, Tori, so much for explaining that. Again, for anyone who didn't hear, uh, you can use the questions and answer app inside of the Google Plus Hangout itself, or just go ahead and use Twitter by doing at the Savage Way or at Noda Brewing with your questions or the hashtag Noda Hangout. All right, Chad, I'm going to turn it over to you. Okay, thanks a lot, Laura. Hey, guys, how's it going? What's up? Yeah, man. Hope you guys are doing well. I've been uh, brewing away today, so this is a nice little break. Uh, topic is music and beers, two things that most people don't actually talk about at the same time. Uh, most of the time, you, uh, beer gets kind of put in with cooking and things of that nature because, I mean, we're, we're making a consumable, but I kind of like to think of uh, beers being closer as far as related to another art as uh, making music and just the music scene in general. So I wanted to kind of start off and just kind of get you guys' background on, uh, on music and why it's important in your life and, and how you got to, to you know, make it part of your careers. So, Terrence, you want to you know, take it away? Yeah. Uh, well, I started playing music. It was my freshman year at Myers Park High School, and I saw our guitar player, or now plays this pop punk band he played in back in the day, and I was like, oh, man, that's really cool. It was like a battle of bands at Tremont, and I was like, I want to do that. So about, about I think, Sophomore year, I started playing like in an acoustic band, and then did that for a while. Then Philip came back home from UNCA when I graduated around when I was like 19 or something. We started. We lived together on Pecan Ave and made music, and we've been doing it ever since. Very cool. Very cool. Chris, what about you, man? Uh, when I was 16, I started working in a record store in Metro Detroit, and I dropped out of everything and just was like, I'm going to work in a record store until I die. And then uh, two years later, they closed all the record stores, and I went, oh, what do I do now? And uh, I got a job working for Clear Channel as a receptionist. I was 22. I've learned everything that anyone needs done since, and now I get to be the marketing guy down here in Charlotte for the amazing Fillmore. It's uh, a really amazing weird ride. Very cool. What's y'all's favorite part about your day-to-day -day job, do you think, right now? Uh, I love... Mm. Oh, you, you can want. go. I was just... I was oh. really say, mm. uh, I, I, I love doing social media. It's I, I 
it's just always interesting and there's always something going on. Like I love running our Instagram. Our Twitter's really cool. Even trying stuff like this where I'm like really uncertain of what we're doing. Like just really cool to be trying out new shit. Can I say shit? I'm sorry. I don't know. <laughs> Good job. Well, yeah. we'll, so much. we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, I think my favorite thing is uh, just running into random people and being like, and being like, "Hey, man, your music's awesome." And me being like, "I have no idea who you are, but this is really cool." So it's like getting to meet people that I never would really meet and get to understand them and get to talk a little bit through drinking and music. So it's pretty cool. Very cool. Very nice. Yeah, it's it's a it's a pretty fun thing on the beer production side when you have people that you don't know or don't recognize at all to come up and say how much they adore what you've done. You know, so I, yeah. I imagine creating music or at least bringing music to people, uh, like in your case, Chris is a, is very rewarding. Um, with me, I don't obviously get paid any for anything uh, related to music, but I grew up in a very musical family, and uh, my dad is still a. Uh, uh, top ranked performing Elvis and tri uh, tribute artists or impersonator, as some people say. So I basically, wow. from the time that I could walk, have been doing music festivals with them and whatnot. So music's always been a pretty big part of my life. And uh, I think my, my geek tendencies to the music scene, because as I'm wearing my Meshuga shirt now, I tend to yeah. kind of go into more like technical, heavy stuff. And generally, it kind of relates immediately into the, the concept, I think, of how uh, we approach beer on the craft side. And just like when I found kind of the metal or kind of not radio-friendly music, I kind of think of uh, how I found the craft beer world would be really similar. You know, you kind of have to find craft beer. You have to look for it in the in the shadows yeah. a lot of times, especially, you know, eight, nine years ago when I first started really delving into it. You couldn't, you weren't, you weren't going to find it in a gas station. You know, you had to know someone who knew the little hole-in-the-wall shop they had it and stuff like that. And I think the same goes for kind of like kind of the underground music scene of any genre. And all that sort of stuff. So I think it. Uh, I think it, that's what makes it more important for you. You know. Yeah, absolutely. It makes it feel like you're part of a movement. You know. Yeah, and exactly. I'm sure you guys kind of get that same sort of vibe too. So I uh, wanted to kind of lead that into just how the beer industry is like the music industry, and, it, and I think that the whole uh, the roots of it is. I think every every major genre of music needs to start kind of like on that little grassroots area. And, and in, in the beer world, we see uh, you know all the all the Crapperies where they start is really humble and really you know small and young and it's all about trying something new and trying a new idea and uh, I mean, do you guys feel that that's kind of a, re a easy thing to relate to the music industry as far as just trying to throw something new out there and, and change people's idea of what your genre what you're what you're trying to say? Um, I'd say that it's kind of like you have like these these like kind of pop rock bands and stuff like that like you'd say like the bigger breweries and the bigger beer companies and stuff like that and you have the sort of the indie -er, more obscure but maybe more uh, interesting indie bands and indie sort of breweries so it's like I think there's definitely a correlation with it and I think it's uh, it's you have to fight to make something different more popular because it's not going to be mainstream you know people aren't going to get it initially but when they get it they're like oh man this is awesome how have I lived without this you know so it's hard to go back to the to the the really mass produced music slash mass produced beer yeah. once you try the the really you know soulful stuff. Uh, I've always exactly, tended yeah. to like, I've always tended to go toward like the more obscure, especially when I was a kid. Uh, and you know, like it's amazing that there's always a new beer you can try, and there's always a new band. And like I, I for the most part, you know, I don't listen to a lot of the Rolling Stones. I don't drink a lot of Coors Light. Uh, I love that you guys are putting out a cool, weird product and kind of making something for everybody to, like, get into and enjoy. And Charlotte's killing it on the beer. Like, you know, I moved here three years ago, and I feel like the beer's come along so far. And I'm from Detroit, so I've got kind of a high bar. I grew up drinking Bells like, at 16. Yeah. You, you had a very good spot to, to, to cut your teeth on beer for sure. But yeah, the scene has grown here a lot. I think I think it grows the same way any sort of music scene does too. You know, you got different fads and genres of stuff that uh, that come up all over the place. And you see, even um, just speaking from the craft beer world, like different counties and regions of different states tend to be obsessed with different styles of beer. Just like you'll see different t genres of music be really prevalent in certain uh, you know regions of, of states or even communities and things of that nature. So it really just depends on what kind of takes hold and, and runs with it. So the, the craft movement and I think the, the 
you know, the genuine, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I hate using the word underground, but, you know, the, 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 the true local artists of, of, of both beer and, uh, and, uh, and music are kind of moving tandem a lot of times as far as the way they approach things. Uh, we had a question um, uh, posted for all three of us is if we play any instruments and what is our favorite. Uh, do you want you guys want to start with that? Uh, I play um, I play multiple things very poorly. Um, you know, I it's like when I was a kid, I was like, I'm going to be in a band, and then I got in the record store, and I was like, I'm better at selling records than playing music. I'm going to do that. But if you wanted, I could poorly play drums or guitar or bass. I could probably sing you a song, and you'd mute me. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, I sing. That's it. Do anything else? I don't sing very well, but no, nor does Bob Dylan. So. <laughs> <laughs> very very good. You killed it at Fizz the other night, Terrence. I came to the show. It was fantastic. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank <laughs> you. I, uh, I personally dabble that, that really poorly, probably worse than you, Chris, at, uh, at bass and guitar. <laughs> and I, I played saxophone, and I like to think the best, best instrument I actually play is probably the jaw harp, just because you can't really screw that up. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'd love to to be a vocalist so one day, but I would never be in my in my dudes. My dad's got an awesome voice, and it did not pass to me at all. But that was a it skipped a, it skipped me went went elsewhere, I guess. Um, one thing that I think when we're talking about uh, similarities, and I and I, I brought my dad is uh, the festivals is it doesn't sound like a craft beer festival and a music festival would be like the same thing, but I think that they're actually pretty well related. Uh, just speaking from my point of view, when I was growing up. I, I keep telling my dad, like, my parents don't drink. Uh, they really support what I do, but like they don't understand the, the beer culture that much. And, and I think they do more than, they, more than they'll admit because they've been immersed in the music culture for over uh, nearly 40 years now. And uh, when my dad would be doing shows and things like that, and I'd be a roadie or be a, a, his scarf man on stage, if, you don't, if you're not familiar with Elvis' performances, he throws scarves out to the audience. So I'd be on stage with him the whole time, uh, tell him the next songs or playing into different little uh, plot things that he would do across the, uh, you know, across the stage and whatnot. But the, the way that you set up and perform a craft beer festival is very similar to working a, a music festival. Because when we would get in, you know, we'd have, you know, my dad's band and whatnot, and we'd get all the stuff set up. We'd hang out with all the other bands that are there and everything like that, get on the show, do the thing, and afterwards, you know, be meet and greet, signing autographs, and all that sort of stuff. And you got the whole day basically working this thing and, and keeping your face on all, and then you break everything down, get all nice and sweaty again. And then everyone would go and meet at like an IHOP or whatever at 2 in the morning and either go back to the hotel or drive the rest of the night back to back to home. That's what I that's what I did from, you know, like 10 years old on up and through uh, college whenever I was back home and whatnot. And when you do a craft beer festival, replace show with serving beer and I hop with a bar, and it's basically the exact same thing. Instead of other bands, you basically just hanging out with other brewery reps that you've known forever. And uh, and I, I tell my dad all the time, I'm like, you prepped me for that. You trained me from a little kid, a little kid up. I was like, I saw the similarities on the very first time I worked at beer festival. So uh, I have him to, <laughs> to thank for that. Do you guys uh, share in the, the experience or have any other unique festival uh, stories or anything like that? Um. I, I, I'm endlessly, like, I want Charlotte to have, like, a huge festival. You know, uh, I think a lot of cities have it. I think that we try to do kind of these one days. Um, you know, there's some people trying to do, get some stuff going. But I'm like, when can we do, like, a huge music festival and get all of the local beers involved, too? And, you know, it's something that we push for at the Fillmore. It's something we talk about at the Fillmore. Uh, it's just sort of difficult in execution with just our space. Um the first time I went to Coachella, uh, Heineken was a sponsor, and it was not a great festival because all day you'd be dressed up drinking Heineken and Amstel, and I was very unhappy about it. I was like, this is the worst. Uh, don't give me some bad options. At a music yeah, exactly. Festival. Hmm. Uh, I feel like besides getting really drunk at festivals, that, uh, I think that, uh, I think that it, it has some similarities too because it's like, you have those major acts. You have these these bands that, like, you know, you have like the Rolling Stones uh, headlining or something. They wouldn't headline a festival, but just because someone already mentioned Rolling Stones, they keep it going. Uh, and then you have like, bands like the smaller breweries, uh, you know, trying to get that same sort of look. So it's like, I mean, it's it's a, it's the same type of competition. You know, everybody creatively is trying to be noticed while there these there's these major looming 
popularity, popular, popular stuff going on. So it's like you know, we're just all fighting for the same eyes, you know, or the same mouth yeah. or ears, you know. <laughs> exactly. Don't drink beer with your ear. It doesn't work. You uh, can try though. I'd like to see the video. <laughs> and, uh, and then you, I think you can see the festivals kind of evolving craft beer a little bit more, and vice versa. Because I mean, you see um, at bigger beer festivals like uh, Oktoberfest, Revival, things like that. There's all, usually a whole gambit of bands that are playing at that, and most of them are, are, are pretty local and whatnot. But they t they tend to provide a huge part of the vibe to the uh, to the whole uh, event. And then you have certain uh, events like up at Royal Hill with the craft brews and um, and uh, music festival, and it turns into you know a a, a music show after the the beer tastings. I mean, they play music throughout the day, but it's a full-blown, you know, concert at the whole latter part of the night. And then you also, on an even bigger scale, Bonnaroo has uh, the Sierra Nevada beer tent now, too. So I think it's kind of something that maybe in the future will become a way more spliced sort of thing. It's just, it's just tend, I think you tend to see, like, the pricing of product at, like, really big music festivals is so skyrocketed that, like, you know, people aren't going to pay, like, $18 for a can of Cavu <laughs> at, at, at some of these bigger festivals and things of that nature. But, you know, I think it's going to evolve into to somewhere around that. Uh, we got another question, I believe. Uh, let's see here. Uh, it says, how do you differentiate yourself and gain a distinct following either as a musician or as a brewer? Uh, do either one of you guys want to start off with that? Terrence, I, I, I will. Um, yeah. I'd say just try to be different, you know? Just take risk. And I feel like a lot of people try to fit into certain molds where it's like, you know, I want to do this. I want to make, like for bands, like, oh, we're going to make this full-length record. We're going to make this video. We're going to do this tour. We're going to do this and that. You know, it's like we're in the, we're in the future. We have all these things that we can use, like the Internet. You just got to be different, and you got to have good music, you know? Don't yeah. worry about your appearance. Don't worry about anything else besides just making good music. And that's how you differentiate yourself because – the music's good, and I think that there's so much out there that it, it you have to be, you know, good to be noticed. So, because everybody can be like, oh, I can listen to this crap, or I can go listen to Drake and dance my tail off. So, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> that's, a, that's I think that's actually a really good point, because uh, a lot of people look at it on the beer side as like, you have to do something crazy in order to be well received and I think it's really easy to do something crazy to get noticed mm -hmm. but it's not something that's going to keep you uh, give you longevity because I mean, we could sit there and make you know a strawberry kumquat rhubarb you know imperial stout aged maple syrup barrels or maple barrels or whatever and then if it comes out again and it's horrible or it's just not you know, it, it doesn't it doesn't have any consistency and there was obviously no like care that was taken for the essential basics of how to really make a good quality beer product, people will, will think it's crazy and like, oh man, did you have that? that was nuts. And then they're like, I'm not gonna ever have it again, but it was pretty crazy. You know, like it's good to get noticed, but if you want to be a lasting impression in the craft beer scene, you have to do exciting product that uh, that people get excited about because they know you're consistently really good at making it. Yeah, exactly. You know, exactly. So, they trust you. Know, exactly. You need to. You know, we we do some funky stuff, and we're about to brew. Um, uh, a, uh, a mojito wit beer right now, but we do it with the same regard to making a really solid wit beer to begin with. It just happens to have a little flair to it as well. So it's exciting. It's different than what a lot of people do, but yeah. it's still made with the with the craft beer craft brewers like conscious. Like we gotta make this a good solid beer first and foremost. We just can't throw it out there and just try to go as weird as possible and expect everyone to, to come back after the first round. So, Chris, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, I'm not really a musician or a brewer. I, I would say like the only like my success comes from uh, I, if there if I have any success, uh, it's just kind of trying to stay local and stay grounded and you know bring things to town people care about, talk about it on social media. Uh, you know, no, I have no, I have nothing. Well, I mean, useful you, you, you get to, you get to uh, hear the response I assume from a lot of people who are fans of the music, obviously, and like what people when people get excited about what's oh, a new thing that. You know, people will get jazzed about as far as what a new band's trying to do or anything like that. Do you find anything that's a regular trend with that, or is it just whatever anyone's feeling at the time? You know, it, we have so many different genres of shows in the venue. Like, you know, it's we'll have a hip hop show and then Nightwish and then you know, uh, 
uh, some indie band. So it's it's a really interesting thing to have to try to appeal to everyone with what you're doing every day. And you know, some of the time the social media response will be like, you know, half the crowd will be like, that's the lamest thing I've ever heard, and half of the people will be like, that's amazing. And you know, you just kind of like celebrate the people who like what you're doing. And you know, uh, certainly I'm not trying to exclude any sort of music. And you know, we love all of it. It's it's awesome that. Pretty much every day of my life, at the end of work, there's a concert to like walk me out the door, you know, and I get to do that every day. Very cool. We got another question, uh, Paula. You have a question for us? Uh, yes, for you actually, but cool. yes. Okay, sorry. Um, so uh, that's okay. Okay, so I have one question for Chris, and then I have a question for you, Terrence, Chad. So, Chris, um, the question came from Lady Alana, and it is. Has the Fillmore always served craft beer, and if what if not, um, when did they start and why? That's for you. Uh, come back to, to chat. Cool. Uh, I started three years ago, and when I started, I was like, "Why don't we have more or any craft beer?" And you know, we are part of a big company, and there are some sponsorship deals. And our argument was, you know. The sponsors can have their sponsorship. We still want to support local, and we ask locals to support us. Like we're a North Carolina business, you know. Every one of us who works there lives here. We all drink good local beer, and at this point, our bar, right when you walk in the door to the right, has 24 handles, and it's all craft. You know, we're absolutely like, how do we do craft? Uh, and we're working really hard on it. And you know, it's become my favorite place to drink. Uh, I shouldn't say that because I'm at work, but it's still my favorite place to drink. Uh, and you know, we're we're putting out together another beer fest in July um, with tons of local brewers, and you know, it's a lot of us maybe drink too much, and uh, it was amazing. You know, it took years of fighting, but like at this point, we're like a very crafty concert venue, and it makes me really happy to be supporting locals and other great, like craft, wonderful beer. Awesome. I think that answers right, everything. So the, yeah. Um, the next question is to um, Terrence and Chad, and it's kind of reversed. So, Terrence, is there any sort of type of beer you like when you're getting creative and making music, etc.? And then, Chad, is there any type of music you enjoy over the other when making beer? So, let's start with Terrence. Well... I haven't really ever thought about a specific type because I don't know. I just we, we we always have to go like practice it like really late. So I'm like whatever I can grab, I grab, and I'm like, all right, cool. But if I, I mean, if I if I had to pick anything, the choice would be like an IPA or something like that. Uh, for no reason, just because I like them more than anything else. So. Yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, yeah. With uh, when brewing, it's it's kind of multifaceted. The uh, like every answer I give, <laughs> um, the uh, it, if we're doing like a big production day, if uh, if we're just you know we're brewing a beer that we already are really used to brewing, let's say we're brewing um, jam session or something like that, uh, we put on whatever most people in the brewery are gonna be liking to hear and be motivated to hear. There's a lot of Primus that gets played in, uh, in the brewery, a lot of Les Claypool stuff. There's a lot of uh, Led Zeppelin, especially on. Um, on brew days, like uh, like when we do Ramble on Red, because it's named after Ramble on Red, Ramble on from Led Zeppelin. It's not Rambling Man. Everyone thinks that beer is called Rambling Red. It's not. It's not uh, all my brothers. Um, <laughs> but uh, so we just try to get a good mix in there. If I'm alone in there, it's basically the heaviest thing I can find. Uh, I tend to listen to a lot of like my Sugar Station stuff and um, Lamb of God uh, stuff. Stuff that's like kind of driving. It's the same sort of stuff that if I was trying to work out, you know, I'd be listen to that. Not necessarily for creative purposes, but because you're you're just trying to stay motivated and and be efficient on time and 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 you know it's hot and you're you're doing a lot of physical stuff. If I'm sitting there thinking about another beer though, like to create, it really depends on what I'm trying to do. Um, uh, if it's something that like if we're trying to do. Uh, Let's say when we made Hope Stout, that was really dark and uh, had a lot of chocolate notes, and it was rich and stuff like that. But it was it was still soft and like it was all just kind of like uh, it wasn't like a lot of like Black Keys sort of stuff or um, or Stevie Ray Vaughan, just kind of just kind of groovy uh, bluesy sort of like just kind of uh, uh, kind of throwback uh, sort of uh, styling, more more blues based. And if it's something that's really big, 
like Monstro, it goes right back to the metal. It's got to be pretty lumbering and dark. Um, Septic Flesh is a good band to listen to when you're making Monstro. And you can probably imagine how Septic Flesh sounds. <laughs> uh, tomorrow we'll, uh, we'll hey, be notarized. So, uh, hey, hey, Noda, come check out Primus on July 20. And <laughs> oh, we intend on doing it. Me and, me and Bart have already talked about it pretty extensively today. Um, That's me actually, the, the first. It was the first. Uh, it was the first conversation we actually really uh, had this morning. Um, but yeah, tomorrow when we brew no, when we brew notarize, we'll be listening to a lot of Metallica because the the inside joke with notarize is when we brew uh, notarize, the, its secret ingredient is Metallica. So it will be pretty much all day. <laughs> so, so yeah. So that's that's. Was there any other part of that question, Tori, or is that good? That was it. That was it. So. Very good, thank you. Awesome. We got another question to that I accidentally skipped, but it's uh, um, I'm sorry, they start palling up. It's uh, what's your uh, favorite type of music and favorite type of beer, and do they correlate or are they just random? Chris, you want to start with that? Uh, sure. Uh, yeah, I uh, hey, I'm oh, I'm drinking Jam Session right now. It's a plug for you guys. Uh, it's delicious. Uh, <laughs> I drink stouts and porters a lot of the time. Uh, the common market was out of Coco Loco since my hence my jam session. Uh, I listen to kind of the '90s stuff. You know, I'm super stoked about Dinosaur Junior, and then I listen to like some alty stuff. Like I think probably last year my favorite show we did was Modest Mouse. Uh, I listen to kind of the indie, the Brit, and like kind of the '90s stuff. You know, I grew up listening to. A, it's weird, like, people have said, like, once you were, like, in your 30s, you listened to the stuff you listened to when you were 18, and I was, no way, but now I'll be like, man, I just want to listen to Pavement all damn day, and uh, I kind of do, um, until my show, and then I listen to Migos or Tyler the Creator or whatever, and that's really rad, too. Um, I'd say, like I said, my favorite is IPA, and then I don't really have a favorite genre, uh, recent, like I try not to listen to as much rock and roll because if you listen to too much of one thing that you do, you're gonna start kind of making it sound like certain other things. So I listen to a lot of like like R and B and a lot of like rap music just because it's gonna kind of influence me in a different way. But um, also it's not gonna sort of translate into my the other kind of music. So with uh, I actually. My favorite type of music, like I said before, was the metal sort of stuff. Uh, really heavy things, really technical um, uh, pro stuff. Like Flesh God of Apocalypse is one of my all-time favorites. My Sugar is all of, one of my all-time favorites. But it doesn't correlate to the beer I'm drinking. It correlates usually with the beer I'm making. But the, I am a big, fresh IPA fan. And uh, I'm actually, I, I think that I recently discovered that my the one beer style that sticks with me all year that I absolutely always love is like a really solid Belgian beer like a Belgian Pale or a Belgian Tripler or something like that. And both of those beers, I think, of light and clean and really bright and, like, you know, something that you should listen to Taylor Swift to or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> but it's, like, it's definitely not death metal. Um, you know, it, even so, like, with the uh, – if you for those that don't know the backstory to it, it's just, the question reminded me of it, but uh, the Rye Pale Ale, which is almost like an IPA uh, from Terrapin, has the turtle playing the little banjo on it, and the reason why that is is because the artist that did, did the artwork for the Grateful Dead, who did the artwork for the Terrapin labels, um, uh, was talking to I believe Spike, the uh, the brewmaster at at uh, Terrapin, and he said that the the pale ale and IPA is, is reminded him uh, of the statement about comedy that Steve Martin said, where comedy should be like the twanging of a banjo and be really bright and, and uplifting and things of that nature. He said that's what I think a good IPA or a pale ale tastes like. So my IPA that I drink is definitely not tasting like the the dark, evil, death metal sort of stuff that I'll listen to. All right. So cool. All right, that was the last question I had right there for the time being. Let's see here. Also, the last uh, kind of area that we wanted to talk about is the practice of making music compared to the practice of making beer. Uh, Terrence, when, you, when you're... Like writing and, and composing just as an individual or as a band, like whether what what's the kind of process in your head as far as uh, how you go about it? Because I keep telling people, like one of the most common things I get asked is, uh, you know, how do you keep coming up with all these beer styles? And I feel like a jerk because I kind of give them a roundabout answer. I'm like, that's like asking a musician. A musician, how does he come up with music? It's the same thing. And I'm not a musician. I just dabble. So I, I kind of want to know if I'm even close to in, in the same ballpark of how you actually come up with uh, how, you know, your songs and just overall music creation? It, 
it really depends on from song to song or idea to idea. Uh, most of the time, it comes with, from Phil uh, having a guitar part, and then we all come in, and then I sing a melody, or they make a bass line and a drum part, and then I sing a melody. But it's all different. It's all, I mean, it is. Uh, I like I like chaos when I create, so because it like kind of brings more out of me than if it was like sort of a formulated sort of I have a melody, you know, Phil has this, Phil has this and this. And so and I, don't, I don't really like structure when it comes to that kind of stuff. So it's like if I can come in randomly for 30 minutes and feel something strongly for 30 minutes and just leave, that's my favorite way of doing, doing it because it's like it's true emotion right there. And a lot of times when you talk about how you create, you kind of it makes you seem pompous. It's like, oh, well, I do this. You know, it's like this is how I create. But it's like. I mean, that's how it is. It's just like I enjoy feeling those that that feeling right when you hear that chord that you're like, oh, I have this, I have this, and then having it and then ha keeping it like that and then walking away from it and then rethinking it and not overanalyzing, but just knowing that at that moment you felt something amazing and that you it was it was a it was a real experience. So that's that's how I create. You know? I gotcha. Cool. Um... Yeah, I, I tend to, when making craft beer, I, I try to think about it as if someone's trying to really technically analyze a, a song structure and stuff like that. Because And it, and I try to overanalyze it because I just get tired of people constantly comparing cooking food to making beer. It's like, yeah, I know, there's grain involved. I, I get it. And there's water and stuff. But the di difference is, and I think this is why I think it relates to music better, is food's an absolute necessity. You make food because you have to, and you just kind of jazz it up when you get the ability to do so or if you have the talent. You know, you don't have to drink beer. Uh, for most people, at least, you, you don't have to drink beer. It's not going to, you know, save your life or, you know, it's not a thing you absolutely have to have. It's a commodity. So, life, and just, you know, I feel that life would be pretty bland without music. I think that, uh, you know, it's, it's also roughly a commodity, too. You can survive you know, without without music. So I think that uh, you would it'd be kind of boring life, of course. But I think it'd be kind of boring to have not have beer too, in my opinion. But uh, so when I when I think about brewing, I look at you know when you have all your different instruments that you get to play with and the different ways that you can use those instruments. I look at it as like what ingredients do we have as our instruments? How can we correlate them together? What different even stuff like how can we change like the chemistry of the water that we're going to use? And it's and it's like that could be a simple equation as a uh, as e equating that to like the way you you rhythm a certain part of the song, like the rhythm that's established there, and then like, you know, what the, what grains are you using at, the, at different points, what hops are you going to use, what spices are you going to use, what yeast are you going to do, it's all basically correlating different things together to make an expression of something that we feel is important at the time enough to, to put in a consumable form. Uh, a lot of times our beers are, are made on uh, occasions, like if it's, some, if it's like a special event or something like that that we're making the beer for, or if it's just a whimsical idea that we just get excited about or if we're inspired from any sort of emotion or, or event that's happened, just like I assume that any sort of inspirational or emotional tie that you would feel you know, would cause you to want to write about anything or, or compose music. Uh, and then it's just compositing it from all the different tools that you have and then and putting it together and, and seeing how it comes out. And I think the coolest thing about uh, the, that equating music to beer is that you don't have to see the label of a beer. No one needs to tell you the story of hop, drop, and roll and what it is in order for you to get the idea of what hop, drop, and roll is. Just because, just like you don't technically need the title to a song to get an idea of what it is, or even the lyrics. You can hear just the music, and you can get an emotional pull out of that. Just feel like you don't need to know what the, the 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 writing on the on the can or the bottle says in order to get an idea of what that beer is supposed to be. So I, I really like using that. Uh, I like saying that way more than saying like it's like cooking. You just follow a recipe and you put them here and here and, and boil and you're done. So it's, it's just, it just seems more so like you're going through the steps and you're just getting like a little a little fancy with it. So, but uh, I definitely feel like it is our artistic expression in, in in for what we can do. You know, we don't always have the talents like like, like you guys have and whatnot and, and and what most people consider a much more mainstream art. But I think that uh, beer is a uh, is our way to kind of express you know what we're feeling basically. It's our outlet and whatnot. Uh, do we have any other questions or anything, guys? Uh, Tori, do you have anyone? We don't have any new questions from Twitter. Okay. All right. Well, then, uh, Terrence and Chris, do you guys have anything you'd like to sign off with or wrap it up? Hey, I'm Chris. I would love it if you followed us on social media, mostly Instagram. That's all. Uh, but holy shit, I love you. I said shit again. 
Um, I love you guys. You're the best. Thanks a ton. Uh, come see some shows, but also follow us on social. Keep up with our stuff. Thanks. It's really early. I appreciate everybody. Uh, thank you to Jam Session for being delicious. Terrence, go. Well, I know my mom's not watching this, but I'd like to give a shout out to my mom. Um, also, follow us on social network. We're on Instagram. We're on Twitter, Facebook. I think some of us have Tinder, so get that. I don't know. Um, <laughs> no. Thank you for letting me do this. I love your beer, and I wish I had one right now. I would probably drink two, but I do not. I'm going to go to the store right now and get one. This is really fun. Terrence, just at my come store. over. All right. Text me the address. <laughs> Done. Right. Thank you guys very much. Great, great band, great venue, great people that are part of both. So, thank wow. you guys for joining us. Wish I had a beer to cheers to you as well. If I did, I would. Uh, keep drinking and listening to good music and good beer. So, cheers. Yes. Consider yourself notified. Thank you guys. Thanks so much, everybody. This has been a really fun and entertaining hangout, and plus we got to learn more about each of you and your love for beer and your love for music. Thank you to all of the audience members that tuned in today and asked questions, gave comments. Uh, we'll be posting this hangout on our YouTube channel later today, so be sure to share it with your friends with the hashtag Noda Hangout. Uh, we'll be back in May with yet another topic for Chad to discuss with special guests. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, and Instagram for updates about our next Hangout. We'll see you in the tap room or at the Fillmore or at other great shows around the city. Cheers. <laughs>